there, you Stormer. Well, once again, the mainstream media is not covering the biggest events on Earth that are going on. And we have got a big one here. This is massive. You can see it from tens of thousands of kilometers away from Earth very, very clearly. Let's take a gander at it. A massive wave of floods heading towards Lake Eyre in Central Australia. In order to understand what is going on here, we need to learn a little bit about Lake Eyre, which is officially known as Kati Thanda Lake Eyre. It's an endorheic lake in the north of South Australia, and that means that it has no drainage outlet. Instead, it has this huge catchment in Central Australia that spreads up into Queensland, into New South Wales, and it is vast. And so we've got a lot of rain that has happened some time ago. Some of it was associated with Cyclone Alfred, which we'll take a look at. And that rain is now working its way down over huge amounts of time down the Cooper Creek and into the Warburton and some of the other rivers that I've forgotten the names of because it's such a complicated system. So let's just get some specifics clear here because this is kind of crazy. I mean, it's blowing my mind, frankly. But, so when Lake Air is fully filled, it ha can cover an area of up to 9,500 square kilometers when the lake is full, making it the largest lake in Australia. But the crazy thing is the area of the catchment for this lake. In theory, the lake catchment is 1,200,000 square kilometers including like a huge area of inland Australia, as mentioned. But so how big is 1,200,000 square kilometers? Well, the area of England is 130,279 square kilometers. So it's almost 10 times the size of England. That is insane. I, I just had no idea. So I wanted to show how to take a look at this incredible flood that's going on. Here we have Australia. So this is NASA Worldview. If you Google NASA Worldview and just click on the link, this will come up. And navigate to Australia. And the default <clears throat> will be the Terra Modis view, which is shown in the left. And you can see the flood waters, which are these brown colors. But I'm gonna switch another option on, which shows them more clearly. If we go to add layers and go to uh, oh God, what is it? Go to collected reflectance and terra modis, which is what we've been looking at. But this time, switch on bands seven two and one seven two one, and then close it. And that kind of gives you this kind of weird balloon green green view, where the cyans are the sand, but the darker blues are the water, and this kind of gives a, a better impression of the edges. On this day, it's a little bit unclear because it's a bit pixelated for whatever reason. If we go to the day before April 21st, you can see the outline of the water more clear. And this really is great for seeing the distances for how far it's got to go to Lake Eyre and also to see how it evolves. So I'm gonna just step this back and we'll see the waters retreating as we go back in time and how they've flooded down the different basins. So the river basins are, this is Cooper Creek over here, and up here is the War Warburton, and it goes into the Diamantina, I think it is, which is up here, and then there's another one. Wait, is this the Diamantina? Actually, sometimes you can put on these labels and it will give you some uh, additional information, but perhaps not enough in this case. Getting back to the current situation, let's take a look at the distances to go. Now, uh, the thing at this point is that, say, Lake Blanche here has been filling over the last week. 
and let's just I'll just show that that filling up so as the water poured in Lake Blanche filled up and now there's actually a couple of outlets to other lakes like Lake From down here which should be filling up perhaps if some of this water looks like a just a maybe a, a fraction of it is coming down this route so my wondering how much is going to get through to lake here it looks like a bit of a complicated maneuver that way i i don't know i don't i don't maybe someone can say in the comments that they understand how the water gets through to lake here this way if it does at all i think it does but i'm not sure in the meantime it's all about the war burton which is up here and the river it kind of currently has to go down this route so the question is how far does it have to go? You can use the measure distance tool down in the bottom right to do a little jiggery down the rough path of the river to have a look. Oops, I've messed it up. Let's do it again. Boom. Here we go. This was a, this is actually from the 21st. If you click too close to the previous point, then it kind of messes it up. And then once you've finished your route, your very rough route like this, you just double click and it'll end it. So it looks like it's got about a bit over 200 kilometers to go down the Warburton, the Weavy Warburton, and then it'll shoot down into the lake and then kind of does a like a straight line down the lake and then it will fill up these basins, particularly this one, I think probably first in the southwestern side. So now I want to go back and see the source of the rain because uh, you'll see in some articles that the rain came from Cyclone Alfred. I don't really think that's the case. It seems to have come from another system I'm just going to show you right now. This is way back on the 1st of March and we've got Queensland up here, Northern Territory, South Australia, New South Wales in the bottom right. And up, up on the top right, you can see Cyclone Alfred spiraling up on its slow and wandering course towards Brisbane, Bris Vegas. And so there it goes. Cyclone Alfred comes up. It does its turn back towards the coast, makes landfall in Brisbane, and then kind of produces a lot of rain. Most of this is outside of the catchment of Lake Eyre, which is all the way down here. Anyway, so as we progress forward, we're now on March 11th. Then Cyclone Alfred is pretty much done. Not much rain in the Lake Air Basin, as far as I can see. It's really afterwards that we get this big mass of rain that develops up in Queensland, but then projects into Central Australia. And around 22nd of March, we get a massive blow up in rain across the Simpson Desert. Diamantina National Park, remember that river, Diamantina is one of the key ones that flows down into the Warburton and then towards Lake Eyre. And that continues for some time. Deep in Australia, unusually heavy amounts of rain in the period of March 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th. It remains really heavy rain. And now you begin to see the signatures coming through as the rain clears of the flooded river plains as that water is beginning to move down into the center of Australia. And then as things begin to clear out, we see this incredible picture of the of the floodwaters coming down the various river basins that I've forgotten the names of. And then finally, things kind of clear out by the beginning of April and we get the view of the floods just pushing down multiple river valleys towards central Australia. And zooming in a bit to the border of Queensland and South Australia, you see the, the floodwaters as we progress into the 4th of April. You see them move down and gradually inject themselves into South Australia and towards Lake Eyre in the bottom left. One of the things to, that I think is kind of fascinating about this is you can see the upper river basins drying out as the water moves down and fills out the lower basin so i'm just going to go through that really quick if we go back to here you'll see the big thick floods in these upper basins if i move it forward really quickly 
you can kind of see those dry out as the water moves down. It's just like this wave of water coming down these 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 dry riverbeds. And I'll finish up with this video just with a look at what it looks like. This was back in the 21st of May 2024 when the river flooded in down the Warburton and came into Lake Eyre and you see it pouring down. So this is a tour with Sentinel 2.